Hello everybody, I'm just going to show you a few things when it comes to uh, direct laryngoscopy and also utilizing a glidoscope so you could visualize the airway. So first thing I would like to talk about is positioning. The important thing about positioning is you have a patient here, right? And you notice what we like to do is we want to align the auditory meatus, that's the ear hole, with the sternal notch. And that will facilitate optimal view, right, when you're trying to intubate. So if this was a bouquet of flowers, right, I'll have my partner here, Miguel, uh, can you sniff, can you sniff the bouquet? Sniff, sniff the roses for me. Okay. Go ahead, come, come closer, right, good. So do it again. So, so he, has, he has auditory meatus, the ear hole, is aligned to the sternal notch. And that's what you want to accomplish, thank you, with this patient. So ideally what I want to do is, I want to have some sort of a padding where I put this under the head, right? And to show you the difference, um, I'm going to use a glidoscope to show you the view. So here, right, when I come in, right, I'm looking at the screen, right, right? The moment I see the top of the epiglottis, I'm going to insert into the molecular, and this is the view of a C. This is the optimal view with proper positioning. Now watch what happens when I take away the, the, the paddock. You notice how it collapses, right? So here again, I'm going to use my hand. I'm going to, again, align the auditory meatus with the sternal notch, optimal view of the vocal cords, and now I'm going to let go. Now, now you have loss of your vocal cords. So whenever you are positioning the patient, always align the ear hole with the sternal notch. All right? So let's get them back to the proper position. All right? Next thing, what I want to show you here, right? Uh, when you instrument the airway, I don't like to see people going all the way in. By doing this, you have hard and soft palate, and this is a metal instrument, so you could damage uh, and cause bleeding, right? You could damage the soft tissues and cause bleeding. So what you wanna do is, after you position the head, you wanna use a cross finger technique to open the mouth, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna start slowly inching on the tongue until I see the sliver of epiglottis, right? Now I see the sliver of epiglottis. I'm still gonna come forward, and what I'm gonna do is, I wanna, once I see the sliver of epiglottis, I'm gonna apply ELM, that's called external laryngeal manipulation, right? And what I wanna do is, I wanna seat my blade into the vollecula. The moment I sit my blood in, into the vollecula, right, that gives me optimal view, right? So I wanna lift and pull forward, right? Do not blindly put this in like this, because this could cause damage. So just one more time, cross finger technique to open it, slowly inching on the tongue until I see the sliver of epiglottis, then I sit my blade into the vollecula and I have an optimal view, right? The next thing what I wanna talk about is how we're gonna adjust the endotracheal tube in order to insert it properly. So here, I'll take a 7.5 tube and I'm gonna take a stylet. So I wanna make sure it's not past the Murphy's eye, this portion here. And then what I like to do is I like to put it in a hockey, uh, hockey stick position. So what hockey stick looks like, it's straight to cuff. And then you have a, like a hockey stick bend. And the reason why I like it, it gives you a much easier maneuverability. So if the airway is anterior, you can twist it up. If it's posterior, you can twist it down. So when you're inserting it, this will look like, like so. Right, so again, cross, cross finger technique to open the mouth. You inch, right, until I see the sliver of the glottis. I insert my blade into the molecular. And now, I never come in straight down. If I come in straight down, I, it blocks my view. So I always come in from the side, right? Never straight from the top, it blocks your view. So I come in from the side. And what I'm gonna do is, with my finger motion, I can rotate and get it into my vocal cords, right? So again, from the side, and I twist. Let's say you had hold up, and this can happen because your stylet may be very rigid and it's blocking you. So what I'll have my partner do is just extend the stylet slightly up, a little bit up, a little bit more, right, perfect. And now I can insert the tube further if I needed to do that, right? Because the stylet was blocking you. So have your partner to assist. So essentially this is how I like to insert um, my endotracheal tube from the side, right? So the next, the next thing what I'm going to show you 
is essentially if you have an airway, right? You have a patient who has very, let's say, anterior airway, and it's very hard for you to see. So we can, what we can utilize, we can utilize a, a bougie, right? It's another name for this is endotracheal tube introducer. So what I'll have my partner do is, once I'm in the correct location, I have my partner lace the endotracheal tube over the bougie, right? So he is, he has my my uh, tube. Now, what this device allows you to do is, it allows you to place a tube when you don't have a really good visualization. So what I mean by this, so let me take the, this away, right? So I'll show you what I mean. So let's say I come in, right? I didn't position my head, and all I, I see the tip of the epiglottis, right? But let's say this is my view. I don't have a good view, right? This is all I could get. I could use my bougie to come from the side the same way, right? And I could insert it into the trachea, right? And the reason why I know I am in the correct location is first you feel the rings, but the best sign to know you're in the trachea is you're gonna have hold up. Hold up means you cannot advance the bougie any further. The hold up is usually at the carina where the, they bifurcate. Now look, right, I have hold up, it doesn't advance any further. Now look what happens if I were to go into the esophagus. So let me pull it back, right? Now you see it goes into the esophagus and you notice if I, if I go into the esophagus, I can keep advancing. You notice how far I could go? But because I'm in the stomach, it can go further. Just to show you again, once I am in the correct location, so I feel the the rings and then when I when I hit the carina it doesn't advance any further so once I know I'm in the correct location I have my partner lace the tube right very important that I still maintain the laryngoscope right in the airway right so he's holding the end and I'm going inside right if, if I feel hold up here let's say it catch, catches I pull the tube up I twist it a little bit and then I advance it further and now you guys see it's in the correct location